My project uses a reasonable sample size to ensure it is representative. Gentrification is a process that involves many things. Many scholars argue that the Arctic represents a new geopolitical frontier. These are three versions of sentences that I've had submitted to me in student essays recently. I've changed them a bit, but they all demonstrate the same issue, the same problem with vagueness in writing. So vagueness happens when students don't want to commit either way to a specific point. So in the first sentence, it comes from the use of the word reasonable. When you're telling me about your project and what you're doing and your sample size, there's nothing more important than being specific. So someone here who puts in something that doesn't give me a definite quantity and instead uses a adjective is really, really showing their either that they don't know what their reasonable sample size is or that they, they're unwilling to commit to one. The second one, gentrification is a process that involves many things. The many things in there, what does that mean? Of course, gentrification is a process that involves many things, but if you're unwilling to specify at least some of those things, if not one of those things, I can't give you any marks for knowledge and understanding for saying something as vague as that. And the third one is a classic mistake that students make where they say that many scholars have argued something. Now, the problem with this is, of course, that it's true, and I can't disprove that, but you haven't actually shown me who you mean by that. And I don't know what you mean by many. The use of the word many in any essay is usually problematic. So these are all examples of vague writing. And what can we do to fix them? Well, there's three things you can do to any single sentence you suspect might have some vagueness hidden within it. The first thing you can do is to actually give specific examples in a sentence. So this is a sentence from one of the first ever essays I wrote as a student. Further to this, human geography has also developed exciting new ways of doing and knowing. Now, you can probably see the problem already there, doing and knowing. What does that even mean? It doesn't really mean anything. It was me trying to sound a bit smart. So to rewrite that, we could obviously specify what those doing and knowing things are. So. Here I've gone for something also quite vague, gathering data and analysing findings. There's an argument to be made for actually making that more specific, saying what sorts of data and maybe what sorts of methods of analysis. That's a trade-off that you have to make and a judgment call you have to make about what you think your marker expects. But here I have improved the clarity of the sentence, at least in some way, by defining what I mean by these ideas of doing and knowing. I've taken those vague concepts and turned them into real, tangible, understandable things. In this example, the writer has not defined their key terms. So we can see the term spatial turn, which is a specific part of geography's sort of academic development. And the author probably thinks here that they've done a really good job, but they haven't actually explained what the spatial turn is. And I can't give marks for knowledge and understanding if you don't demonstrate to me what that is. Now you may well know what the spatial turn is, but you do have to actually tell me. So the author here could improve the sentence by giving some more specificity about that term. And here you can see I've just added it at the end of the sentence. Now it might be the case that they go on to explain it in the next sentence, but here I'm assuming they don't. So just by adding a little bit more detail that shows you understand what that is, the marker can then give you the marks uh, for knowledge and understanding. The third thing we can do is to actually really commit to saying what we want to say. Now, this is a classic thing that students do, and it's very understandable. In the world of academic study, there's so much complexity, so much nuance, so many other ways of viewing an issue, so many other paradigms or philosophical approaches you could adopt to understanding something that, how do you know your way is right? Well, no one's expecting you to say that your way is right, unless you're dealing in a subject that deals in very specific definites, but in human geography, we often deal in arguments. So having an argument is fine. No one's actually asking you to produce the right answer. So you can remove vagueness from a sentence like this by taking out the conditional. So perhaps, perhaps and one of are two big problems with this sentence because they actually nullify, they actually negate everything that went before it. If you're going to make a very strong statement, a very reasonable one, which is to say that climate change is the most important issue facing the planet today, then say that. Don't negate the entire sentence by putting in the word perhaps or one of, or perhaps even issues. So you need to remove the S from there. Say it is the most important issue. The student who writes that sentence is trying to tell me that climate change is the most important issue facing the planet today by 
qualifying their statement, they're not improving it, even though you can see why they think they are. They are just muddying their argument and adding vagueness into it. Make sure you are doing your best to remove vagueness from your writing. Good writing is specific and it's confident and vagueness is the enemy of those two characteristics. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time on Remarkable.